So recently we've been discovering, well, I've been discovering that these cheap Chinese fuses don't blow at three amps. And I am at a client's house right now and he is like an electrical engineer as a hobby. So you're not gonna wanna miss this. Stay tuned, thumbs up. And I'll put his, you want me to put your, your channel down? Yeah, and so check out his YouTube channel, down, down, a link in the description box down below. impressive setup <laughs> all right all right go ahead so so what we have for the for the purposes of, of today anyway is I have a power supply here that can put out up to 30 amps copy I got it going through the fuse under test copy this is just a weight to keep the wire from flapping around <laughs> and then it goes into this which is a programmable electronic load so what I can do with this is I can turn this knob to dial the current up and down to control how much current is going through that fuse. Copy. And this shows the 12 volts that's coming out of the power supply. Okay. And then over here on the computer we have a graph, so as I turn this up you can see the blue line goes up, that's 3 there, the scale goes from 0 to 10 on the amps, and then the red line is the voltage here, it goes 0 to... And that your, the, your, um, your voltage is 12 amps, well 12.084. 12, 12 volts uh, coming out of the power supply, because it's a 12 volt power supply. Okay. Um, so what we can do is we can turn this up and see when it pops, essentially. So right now you have 3.3 amps and that is a purple fuse? That's a red fuse. How many amps is that fuse? That is a three amp fuse out of an Amazon. Oh, it, it looks purple. Oh, it's just assortment. a... Yeah, three amp fuse. Yes. Amazon assortment. One of these. Okay. So Very now we're at 3.3 amps and she has not blown yet. That's correct. Hmm. So we can keep winding the wick here. Have you tested duration of time? A little bit, a little bit. I wonder um, maybe like a 3.5, 3.5 amps over like period of 10 minutes, then it'll blow. That's correct. If you, so if you buy, if you had a fuse, you know, a quality fuse. A would, fast acting fuse as opposed to a slow Chinese fuse. Exactly. But they also will give you, you know, if you use a, a good one, right, the manufacturer can give you a data sheet where there's a curve that says for this given amperage, this is how long it'll take to blow. Hmm. So obviously the higher it is, the less time it's going to take. Some it could take minutes, seconds, days, um, hours, whatever, or forever. Duration of time is, Because it's, it's they, heating up and it's yes. waiting to you know, melt that little wire. I wonder if you, have, if you could put a thermal camera on that and see. Yeah, I, I, I could. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> so let's take but a look. Start. So we have 130 degrees. Wow. But the most of the heat generating from that little filament that's right there, or whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Keep cranking. So that's at 3.8 amps. 3.8. Okay. Let's watch this 3. thing. 3.9. 4. 5. 4 4.1. 4.2. 4.3. Now I tried to find out the answer. For time, duration for, of time? Yeah. How, how high should a 3 amp fuse go? But... There's no one answer, it depends on the fuse. 4.3 amps, a little under 12 volts of power. That's DC volts, right? That's DC. Now DC is actually harder to, to break than AC. So you normally would rate you know, the same fuse, you would derate it for, for DC. So now we're up to 160 degrees. At 4.5 amps, 160 degrees. I'm surprised the plastic hasn't melted. It actually does sometimes hmm. if you do it really slowly. Uh, I've got a few in my bin where you can clearly see the plastic melting. Wow. 4.7. Have you tested this before and see what amp it blows up? Yep. <laughs> Is it over five? I'm going to keep going. <laughs> so we can get some. Five amps. Five amps. There you go. Oh. Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard a little. Oh, there and it, and it uh, cuts out on the... On your charts, because you yeah. love data. <laughs> you are an electrical engineer by Can hobby. You smell that? Burn smell? Oh, yeah. Yep. So, so it blew at five amps. Interesting. Now, that's hot. Yeah. Well, it's careful there. So you can see the melted plastic. Wow, look at that. Wow, it actually melted the melted plastic right there. Yep. Wow. Hmm. Now, do you have a, for comparison, do you have a Busman fuse? I don't. Damn, I don't have one either. I, I, I ordered I it. 
I ordered. They didn't have any at Johnstone when I went. I don't know how they didn't have it the other, the other day, but I'm waiting. I had a couple things from my junk drawer, and so I was able to try different fuses from different manufacturers, and they, they do vary a lot. These tend to be pretty consistent within the batch, but another batch of identical-looking 3-amp fuses that I got, who knows when, blew out a much lower, uh, I think, 4-point... Hmm one something like that but obviously if i crank this up to 10 amps or something like that it should blow immediately yeah um which is you know important yeah yep. constantly that's good so. at least there is because <laughs> we, we've been cranking up over several minutes from nothing to high as five when it finally blew but at least it instantly blew at that yes. point yes and i don't know what that means for the real world right is that going to destroy your your transformer I think a short is gonna is gonna pull a lot of current and pop pretty Correct. quickly. But so in two in two occasions, um, well actually three occasions that I can of recent memory. You know I have my three amp fuses, which obviously are not fast acting, and in those three cases the transformer actually blew. Mm -hmm. You know yes, you, I, I even used little poppers before. My little poppers went on fire. You know people ask me like why don't you use a little popper? Mm -hmm. I, the one I had and I've replaced it melted huh right before it actually popped so that's why i didn't trust it you know kind of like a chinese fuse yeah yep. so i have a replacement little popper but i'm just scared to use it. i'd rather go through a series of fast acting busman fuses now than in, in troubleshooting looking for uh, a short in most cases an air conditioning system you have thermostat you know is, is you know crossed over somewhere or the contactor is shorted out and you're getting you know significantly more than 24 volts on a uh, low voltage control wire. Yeah, yeah, but I guess if it's just a little bit too much, it could take a long time to blow. Yes. I tried I tried these little glass ones too. I put a I put a 5 amp in there. I ran 10 amps through it. It took over a minute. It, wow. It glowed like a light bulb. Also for it, <laughs> before, before Really? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so, that's that's not going to be good for the equipment. Huh. So the the lesson learned here is with regards to the cheap or the cheaper you know, uh, foreign fuses, we need to know the duration of time before it responds to three amps. Yeah. And obviously those are not fast acting and you risk equipment damage and parts failing r before the fuse actually blows. Yeah. Because you don't have, you have an unknown amount of time which you haven't been able to get an answer from. You don't know what proxy. you're getting, right? Busman would give, would actually have the specs and they would make them. Yeah, I've I think I've read them so, uh, this past know. weekend. Who knows even that these don't differ from one fuse to the next, uh, you know, I just... Yeah, and what kind of quality, you know, what kind of quality, uh, quality control is in the product? Like, yeah, exactly. you know, the, the fuse, that little filament inside this one, you know, appears to be slightly larger than what, you know, on Busman fuses, appears to be. Again, I'm not an electrical engineer or, you know, I don't have the equipment to actually measure, but they appear to be slightly larger, appear to be. This is pretty cool, though. This digital os oscilloscope. Oh yeah, that's that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. They had a they had a special deal when they first <laughs> special deal <laughs> that model where you could get this with all the options, which norm it would be way outside of my price range. Um, it was still stupid expensive, but I was able to own, own a piece of test gear that I would never own. And you have this looks like a microscope. Yep, uh, nice inspection microscope for. Huh. Looking at stuff uh, like fuses and circuit boards. Wow, look at that. An Altar. <laughs> 8800. This is a replica. Of, oh. Uh, of, uh, it's exactly the same shape and front panel and everything, but ama amazingly, there's nothing inside of it. It's totally empty. Oh. Um, just a just for show. Circuit board. Yeah, but it, it behaves exactly like the, uh, like the real one. Cool. Yeah. So. Cool stuff. You got a lot of cool stuff here. That's what I like it's a do. nice hobby. Yeah. You know, I like to swim in the pool. And light fireworks, and this guy has got crazy cool stuff here. And this is some kind of like etching machine, it looks yeah, like. So it's a CNC milling machine that you, can, you know can uh, carve. It's like it's a router that's controlled by. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much for this info. You are welcome, guys. Sure check out his YouTube page. Link down in the description box down below. You want to say hi? Hey, Chris Masto here. Hello Great guy. Great guy. Um, and he's got cool stuff here and I'm very intrigued by this stuff, but I love his explanation on the fuses. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Guys, check out his YouTube page. Show St. Mike commands you to show him support. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.